when we first uh, started this process, based on a, a revenue shortfall, uh, we were facing uh, possibly a 16% uh, increase, and, and we knew that that would not uh, sit well with the community, nor would it be uh, sensitive to the taxpayers on, on our part. So uh, through a tremendous amount of hard work and, and, and working with all bargaining groups, uh, we're now down to about 7.49%. And at 7.49%, it basically uh, includes all of the programs we currently offer to our students. And, uh, you know, we hope that uh, the community will embrace it. The board them. always took the direction, or always took the position that whatever cuts had to be made, they were going to, you know, least impact on students uh, while remaining uh, uh, fiscally responsible and, and taxpayer sensitive. We're able to really focus in on, on the key areas and focus in on what, it, what was important to the students, deliver on those promises while cutting in areas that weren't necessarily student-facing. Through that process, we were able to get it down to 7.49. And I think overall the process was very effective to come up with a budget that we can be proud of and put to the community that's taxpayer-sensitive but meets the needs of our students. The board certainly has uh, listened to the community as we've been out and about uh, having these uh, nightly meetings since December and uh, some of the big items that uh, the community uh, expressed great passion about were class sizes, uh, music, sports, full day kindergarten, uh, there was talk of uh, possibly closing buildings, possibly selling the Waverly Fields, people were passionate about the GATE program, the science research program, and, and so many other uh, wonderful programs that we currently offer. So under a past budget, all of those programs are, will still be in place. If the budget is defeated, uh, most of those programs will become a casualty of a defeated budget. The important budget. thing to remember is the 7.49 includes all of the student-facing opportunities that our kids enjoy today. All of the music programs, all of the athletic programs, all of the co-curricular clubs, class sizes remain the same. All of that's included in the 7.49 budget. If that budget is defeated, then I think all those things are on the table again. The 7.4% 7 budget it's maintaining, basically maintaining the educational program. The new laws under the tax cap laws, in the past we had the ability for contingent budgets, the laws changed this year due to the 2% tax cap, it could go to a zero, which would be devastating for SACHEM. It would not be the same program as we have today. It fails, it's going to be, it's going to be really difficult. Because as I was saying, sports, music, athletics, it's all on the table again. But it's much more than just those, those sort of clubs and those sort of activities. Those sort of, of clubs and activities, yeah, they're great for our kids. But those kids are also giving back to our community. The people of the athletics group and the music clubs, they're coming together doing community service. In the days post Sandy, when our, when our area was in, in disarray and our, and our neighbors needed us, those groups, the athletic kids, the music kids, the kids from a, a variety of different clubs, came together and they, they did things to support the community. They raised food, they did clothing drives. They shut down several local firehouses just because their friends and neighbors were in trouble. And that was, that was the athletic groups and the music groups. It wasn't them performing on stage or on the field. It was those kids giving back to the community. And I hope the community doesn't let them down. We're, we're a very large district. We have almost 15,000 students and uh, no two students are alike. And the one thing you hear uh, from our graduates is that uh, Sachem provides something in the classroom and out for, for every student. There's an opportunity to really make a large, large school uh, feel like a very intimate environment. So uh, we are very fortunate in that we do have something for everyone. And, uh, you know, when people prioritize potential cuts, uh, understandably so, that priority list uh, usually... Uh, involves the age that their children are or uh, th activities or classes that their children currently take. But when you think about 15,000 children and, and you try to provide uh, quality opportunities for all, uh, each one of those uh, different programs are, are very special. If the budget would fail, um, the amount of programs, the amount of corporate clubs, uh, athletic opportunities, um, you know, even educational opportunities for students would be diminished to um, just a few programs. Um, you know, if the budget was to fail, our, our music would go to state minimums. 
uh, SIP guidelines, our athletic program would be decimated. We'd have just varsity sports only. Um, you know, gate would be gone. You know, program for our gifted and talented students. Co-curricular co clubs would be eliminated. Um, for the most part, opportunities in which you know drive children to get up in the morning and come to school would no longer would no longer exist. Voter turnout is absolutely critical. Historically, we have about a 12 and a half percent voter turnout which means 87.5% of the people sit at home and they don't have their voice heard. At the end of the day, we need to make a difficult decision in Sachem, and I'm hopeful that everyone will express their opinions and express their views at the polling place and come out whether you're supporting the budget or if you're not supporting the budget. At least take the time to come out and have your voice heard. We need the community more than ever now to come out and support this budget. Um, I know many people ask me, what about next year? What kind of position are we going to be in next year? Certainly, as long as this board is in existence, we're going to continue to fight the students. We're going to continue to put out taxpayer sensitive budgets, but we need the community to come out and, and certainly voice, you know, cast their vote and voice their, their concerns and opinions on the budget. In a district of about 55,000 registered voters, we average about 8,000 voters a year. So uh, we're, we're trying our best and we're working hard and we're working with the Board of Education and the PTA to get the word out for people to become involved in this process because. Um, you know, 8,000 people uh, does not represent this entire community. So uh, we, we really hope that people get involved in the process and, uh, you know, exercise their right to vote.